Hi, hi. Uh, this is Russell Haswell for ED Music. Uh, hello. Yeah. Yes, I've been to Japan more than 20 times. Wow. But my Japanese language is still <laughs> very, very small. Okay. This is my first time in almost 10 years, mm. so I've I've forgotten mm. the language mm. a lot. Okay. I feel they're oh, interesting wow. places. Mm. I'd like to visit all of them. Mm. I've only been to Japan. It's the only Asian mm. country I've visited. Mm. Uh, I like traveling. I hate traveling, but I mm. like getting to the place. Okay. I don't like the aeroplane or the travel itself, but I'm always happy when I've arrived somewhere. Uh, and Japan is only is the, yeah is the only place in Asia that I've travelled to. Although I've travelled far extremes of the world, I've been to the Arctic Circle, and I've been as far south as Tasmania. Uh, well, we've had good. Mm -hmm. I've been to Japan with Aphex Twin a few times. We always had a good fun here. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting travelling around the country or or the city. Mainly trying to eat as good food, as much good food as we could, <laughs> uh, and visit different nightclubs, venues. Mm -hmm. My my, the first time I met Peter was when I was working on a, a project for an art commissioning organisation called TBA Twenty One from Austria, and I was asked to curate some sound works for a pavilion with five different surround, surround sound zones within this pavilion. And I've been familiar with Peter's work and his work with EMS and synthesizers in general. And I thought at the time that it would be interesting to ask Peter to work on this project. So I decide, decided to commission him work and he hadn't been making any music since 1974 I think he told me at the time uh, and basically I found out where he lived and I knocked on his door and I invited him to be involved in the project which he accepted at the time uh, and since then I've traveled with him to a few different places and met him on many occasions and now I find myself in Japan with him. I'm drinking Bikul mm. uh, and I really don't know what it is. Mm. It smells disgusting. <laughs> I mean it doesn't taste too good either. Mm. I'm not sure it's a Brabus. Mm. I'm not sure it's the right thing to be drinking. Anyway. So, come back. <laughs> Come by, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, there's the police. Oh, yeah. They're everywhere. Okay, so, yeah, I'm from Coventry in the UK, which is an industrial town, and I where they make cars and aircraft engines and uh, it's a heavily industrial city, lots of unemployment. Anyway, it's also where art and language and some conceptual art uh, started. Uh, I studied fine art in the university in Coventry and my interest in art and conceptual art and critical art uh, started there and it now still informs my practice with sound. I guess my music journey started when I started to listen to John Peel on the BBC radio mm -hmm. and when I started to buy records as a teenager that's when I listened to lots of different 
types, styles, genres of music, and uh, uh, Japanese noise. <laughs> Uh, my favourite band are the Incapacitants. I also like Pain Jerk. I also like the, the work of Yanis Anakis, particularly his electroacoustic and computer music. I guess when I first started, when I first had a laptop, which was in the in the mid to late 90s, I don't know, 90, maybe 96, 95, 96. Uh, and and then I guess that's when my investigation of software and things, softwares to generate sound and to process sound became interesting. I had interest in it before, but until I had my own machinery or computer, uh, my interest was obviously peaked at that point and I guess I started to investigate software more and to discover what was available and what processes were available on the computer. Back then, mm. wow, uh, mainly it was using software like Super Collider, Max MSP, mm. was using different plugins. Uh, I experimented with things like GRM tools, uh, some of the software from Urcam in Paris, uh, some software, some freely available softwares from universities in America, which you could download from their web page. Uh, I can't remember all the names of these softwares now. Also, some early plugins I used to use. There's a lot, it's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> there's sound art and there's yeah. electronic music everywhere now. Yeah. Everybody has a computer, everybody's got an iPhone or an iPad. Examples of mm -hmm. electronic music. Mm -hmm. And there are too many records mm -hmm. and too many sound artists. And some of it's really good, and some of it's really uninteresting and uninspired mm -hmm. and unchallenging. Mm -hmm. My interests lie more in things that I find challenging and, and sounds that I've never heard before. Mm -hmm. I want to be constantly ch challenged when I'm listening to sound, and I really like hearing new sounds and sounds that I've never heard before or uncommon sounds and I'm bored of the repetition of familiar sounds mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that's the same globally whether it's whether it's in England or Japan or or wherever obviously there's histories in terms of where synthesizers originate from in which country and where and when but in the end, that, that doesn't really matter anymore. Everybody's got, I've got an iPhone, mm -hmm. and yeah, I have some sound apps on here. Mm, okay. And uh, for example, there's a Zanakis Gendin. or four years there's so many more manufacturers and my interest is in how you can mix these different brands together to make your own unique synthesizer I don't I'm not interested in complete systems from one manufacturer I want to mix up different brands put them together and to make something that nobody else has got something totally unique of course, there might be many people who have got huge synth <laughs> Euro rack systems and they probably have all the same modules that I might have. Uh, but I'm sure that we all use them in different ways, so 
I'm not so concerned about this.